news. It's now time for us to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from all around the world. And of course, we do start here at home with this day newspaper, uh, which uh, is leading with the story that we have unpacked at great length, which is 14 months in office, Council of State, NGF pass confidence vote on Tinubu's leadership. Uh, so, of course, we have already discussed that in detail. However, just above that, uh, below the masthead, is uh, some, some news coming out of Rivers State, which reads, intrigues as ruling party APC Rivers chapter now backs Fubara. Of course, we had uh, the reinstated chairman of the APC Rivers State here on the program yesterday, and he declared his, his support uh, for the PDP governor, who is similar life for so a, a, a lot of uh, intricacies and things. Uh, some, some are calling it a political drama that continues to unravel itself in River State. Well, let's now head to Punch newspaper as uh, Punch uh, continues on the theme of that Council of State meeting that happened yesterday and leads with uh, the submission by the National Security Advisor saying FG blocks 83 billion Naira protest funds, arrests political collaborators as government uncovers $50 million in crypto funds and blocks four digital wallets containing $38 million. So again, that's a story that we've already unpacked a great length. Of course, always room for more discussion. However, at the top of the punch is a, a story coming from the NNPC. And it says NNPCL postpones Port Harcourt refinery kickoff for the sixth time. Now, the punch <laughs> newspaper say that they have made the necessary inquiries and uh, however they say the response the official response from nnpc when they made the report and the the investigation was that nnpc says that all is still on course. Uh, however, by all indications, we are halfway through the month of August. Uh, there are questions, and you know we've discussed this severally. Rafai has highlighted this many times. We are wondering, you know, if all is on course. When exactly in August will we see this Port Harcourt refinery kicking off? Staying with NNPC, but now moving to Vanguard newspaper. Vanguard uh, has a headline focused on telcos. But before we get to that, uh, just uh, at the top, they continue very, very top line. It says NNPC explains why they reduced their stake in Dangote refinery to 7.2% from the initial 20%. And of course, that was in order to invest in CNG. Uh, that's the natural, compressed natural gas. So uh, Vanguard takes a deep dive into NNPC's explanation as to why they reduced their stake in the Dangote refinery from 20% to 7.2%, citing that their new interest is in investing in CNG in support of President Tinubu's uh, reforms. However, the lead story of the Vanguard is all about telcos. Now, this story sounds very, it, it sounds strange, but it's, it's a true story. And it says, ballooning operating costs. NCC stakeholders kick as telcos threaten service outage. Now, the telcos are saying that their operating costs have become so high that they might have to operate according to the framework of load shedding that we normally see in the energy sector. So they're saying that what they feel they might have to start doing now is to only provide service to certain places at certain times so that they can manage their operational costs. Uh, the N NCC has responded and said they won't be bullied uh, and you know they won't engage in this type of harsh negotiation. However, the proposition from the telcos to say that our tel 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 telecoms uh, uh, services will be, you know, intermittent. You know, the way the power goes is how your telephone network can, can come and go because of um, high operating costs is, is quite a strange story. But that's where they are. And they, they're feeling that that's a realistic way forward for them uh, as they try to manage uh, ballooning operating costs. Now, let's move to Daily Trust. Daily Trust is focusing on bread and butter issues and did a special report. In fact, they highlighted a report by Premium Times, which says Nigeria is wasting rice, yam, fish amid food crisis. Now, the details of this report say that the nation is currently losing 20 to 40 percent of its rice at harvest points and at market stages. They interviewed some small scale mar uh, farmers from various parts of the country. And one farmer from Eboyi State said that many people 
travel to Ebony to, to look for rice. They want to buy rice. However, they can't access her farm because the roads are so bad. So she also doesn't have any storage facilities. So most times the food that she has harvested and wants to sell uh, ends up rotting because there's no access to market, um, which is a really tragic state while we're talking about food insecurity. The reality is that there are some places in the country that have an abundance of food that they're throwing away simply because they can't access the market. Uh, very, you know, a very shocking revelation. Um, but uh, that's where we'll stop with Nigerian papers. Let's quickly go to African papers, to the Daily Nation in Kenya. The Daily Nation is echoing a sentiment that we're seeing globally, but a lot, a lot more so here in Nigeria. They're saying you are on your own over high power bills. So they're doing an investigation into why the energy bills continue to be so high, uh, even though tariffs were supposed to have been reduced. Again, a very, very, very tight place for President William Ruto to be. But Kenyans are uh, focusing on all areas of accountability, governance, service provision in their economy right now. And now they're shifting their attention to the energy sector. At the very top, above the masthead, uh, there's also a report on how Raila Odinga is now claiming that it was former President Uhuru Kenyatta who asked him to reach out to current President William Ruto in order to end the current impasse that we see with the ongoing protests in Kenya. Now for some good news to Botswana, the Botswana Gazette. We saw this. This was everywhere yesterday. It went viral. Let's see Le Tebojo, the gold medalist first gold medalist from Botswana, came home to a hero's welcome. They filled out a stadium with over 30,000 people, and he just got, you know, such a... And it was great to see it. All the international media covered it as well. I saw it on CNN, BBC, and so forth. They all covered it live as you saw this huge stadium of 30,000 people cheering this guy on, and I believe that today is a public holiday as well in Botswana. That's how much they value that gold medal. Uh, so, you know, at least some good news from one part of the continent. Now let's shift our attention back internationally. We'll go through this very quickly as we've already spent a lot of time on international news. Financial Times. Financial Times is leading with the new CEO of Starbucks. Uh, so Financial Times reports that Starbucks has ousted the chief and the CEO and appointed the Chipotle boss after activist pressure. Uh, there were reports about how the outgoing CEO was overwork and uh, had a poor work ethic. I saw a report somewhere that said that he said that you should never call him after six o'clock. Like, don't disturb the man after six o'clock. And uh, so they're hoping that this new CEO, Brian, Brian Nickel, uh, who also, during his time at Chipotle, was able to increase the share price by almost 800%. They're hoping that he can come in, inject some new change, uh, reform the culture in Starbucks, and also get that share price back where they feel it belongs. And last, but certainly not least, the Daily Mirror UK uh, is leading with a story that says, get ready to flee. And this is an emergency plan to evacuate Brits from Israel as war fears Mount. So Middle East on the brink, it is getting to a very volatile place. I mean, so a couple of things. I'll predominantly be on Nigeria and the NMPC. So because when we say these things, the NMPC will come out at us and say, oh, you don't like the face of Melikiari, which I don't really care so much. I just care for performance. I don't care about him leaving or not leaving. I just care for performance, all right? Now they promised us that by August, the refinery in Potaka will start churning out oil. Today, we've not seen anything. Punch said, they said it's work in progress. We are waiting for the work in progress. We are waiting to see it. Another response, I hear somebody representing the NMPC said the other day that the reason why they scaled down their shares in Dangote refinery was because they wanted to invest in CNG. Well, it was just recent. They, they said it, it was yesterday. They said it yesterday. Yeah. So I'm shocked and I'm asking, you want to invest in CNG then? You are still saying your refinery will come on stream, and you're saying you're investing in all the refineries across the country. So if Dangote did not come out to say that you didn't pay up all your paid-up capital, you wouldn't come out and tell us because you want to invest in CNG? I mean, if we say this one now, they will say, oh, Rufai is against NMPC, doesn't want them to do well at all. No, we just want performance. See, never ascribe to malice what you can explain with incompetence. The reason why I keep making my point about the failure of the NMPC is that I see too many incompetence. That's just it. I don't care who is the head of NMPC. I don't care for anybody. All I care for is I want Nigeria to work effectively. And that's my priority. 
Okay. It's NNPC or oh, Rufa. You have to remember that they're now a private company. They're no longer NNPC. NNPCL. PCL. All right. So uh, very quickly, uh, let me talk about the telcos because this is you know these are some of the things that when people here in Nigeria, at least let some things work. And if you're talking about price or hike um, in the tariff of um, your data, mobile phone, um, buying um, network um, credit on your phone, it's going to get people talking. And to be honest, to speak on behalf of the telcos, yes, people might say they're being greedy, they want to make excess profits. But the truth is that in that seminar, Mr. Kato Riola, who is from MTN, had said that it's almost impossible to expect with the current um, devaluation of the Naira, Forex um, instabilities and volatility, and the sheer high cost of running a business like that in Nigeria, that you don't ex you expect them not to increase tariff for 11 years, that it doesn't make any sense. And with regards to that load share, in Vimbai, I dare say that they might have started the load shedding. I'm telling you, I was the reason I'm saying that and I smiled when we were speaking is that when I was having this same conversation with someone a few days back, especially during the protest and post the protest. Have you noticed how epileptic network provision has been? So maybe that was just a sign of, of, of things to come, that this is what could potentially happen. happen. And yesterday, when, we were going to, when, when the headline around data penetration, you know, not being able to achieve our data and broadband penetration, I think by 2027, or 70% uh, of that, I was going to say that let's even look at and probe the quality of service mm -hmm. that Nigerians enjoy currently with what they are paying. So the truth is that they've also talked about how it would also discourage investment in that sector because it's not just viable. So yes, why would I say that? Yes, let's protect the Nigerian consumer, but we must also make business sense with regards to yeah. it. Is it possible for them to continue to run correctly with the way that business it's is being run? Possible. It's not. It's not possible. Let's just you know, be honest. Hurtful. So they have to fix that side. It's true. And they the forex yeah. problem has made them lose most of their... Yes, MTN lost their, 137 their, billion their, naira last year. Yeah, last year. After so they're losing taxes. money. Ooh, so but load shedding of telco services is, is not the way to go. All right. Uh, we look forward to more from that.